Okay. Um, so welcome. This is uh, the video from Unit One, Section Six, uh, which is our last section from Unit One. So Section One Point Six. Um, in this section, uh, we're talking about solving higher order polynomial equations. Um, also, in this section, we're going to talk about solving equations that are quadratic in form. And solving equations involving radicals. So um, I want to solve and um, show you a couple examples and hopefully that will help you with uh, studying uh, this section and do your homework problems. So example one, we have to find all solutions. Of the equation. And it's 3x to the third power minus 2x equal negative 5x squared. So this equation is the example of the first one, higher order polynomial equation, because we see the exponents which is higher than 2. So this example is example of the equation of higher order polynomial equation. So polynomial equation means that you're going to see x uh, or any different variable bring to the power which is bigger than 2. So here the highest exponent is 3. So degree of the, uh, of the polynomial, degree of this polynomial equation is equal to 3. Okay. But we don't really need to know that. We just need to know how to solve it. So step number one, what we want to do, we want to bring all the terms to the left side. And so we're going to bring all terms to the left side. Because you want to have a zero on the right side. So in this case, we'll just add 5x squared to both sides. So that will give us 3x to the third power plus 5x squared minus 2x equals 0. So higher order polynomial equation, you always want to have a 0 on the right side. OK, uh, now what we're going to do next. Next, we're going to factor out x. Like you see, each term has x as a variable. So you're always going to factor the variable to the lowest exponent. So that's x. So we're going to factor x out from each term. So technically what we're doing, we're taking that 3x to the third power divided by x, that will give you 3x squared. Okay, because when you multiply, you should get your previous equation plus 5x squared divided by x, that will give you 5x. And then negative 2x divided by x will give you negative 2 equals 0. And of course, you can always check. If you will multiply, distribute that x, uh, then you should get your previous equation. So we factor x out, okay? And um, technically, we... 
uh, what that tells you that we will solve here two equations. Because we're going to use zero product property. So we have a product x times the expression right here in the parentheses, it's equal zero. That product is equal zero only when x is equal zero and only when 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals zero. Okay, so we're solving two equations. x equals zero, we already have one solution. And now we need to solve the quadratic equation. So this is quadratic equation. Solve quadratic equation here. And it's up to you which method you want to use. You can use the um, quadratic formula if you want to, or you can um, do the factoring. Okay, so you will pick um, the method you wanted. I'm going to solve it by factoring. So um, AC method. So A times C, it's equal three times negative two, that's negative six. I'm looking for two integers, which by multiplication will give me AC product, which is negative six. The same integers by addition should give me coefficient B, and in our case, that's five. So now we have to check what's going to work. Um, six and negative one will work. So when you find those two integers, now we have to be careful because A, it's three, it's not one. So I'm creating temporary factors. I will call it that way. 3x plus the first integer, which is plus 6, times 3x minus 1 equals 0. So this is temporary factors because a was not equal 1. So what that means, we need to factor greatest common factor from each parenthesis if it's possible. So from the first parenthesis, we have three and six, so we can factor three out. So that will be X plus two. From the second parenthesis, you have coefficient three and one. So there is no common factor. So um, just keep it the way it is. And the last step will be divide by three. So we're dividing the left side by three, we're dividing right side by three, that will cancel, and we have x plus 2 times 3x minus 1 equals 0. So we factor correctly, and now when you factor, you're just solving two equations. x plus 2 equals 0, 3x minus 1 equals 0, and that will give us x equal negative 2. Here we're getting x equal 1 third. So we have three solutions of this uh, problem. So the solution set is, and I'm going to list all the solutions from the lowest to the highest number. So we have negative two. Don't forget about the zero. That's uh, was that zero come from the x which we factor at the beginning, and one third. Okay. So that was first example, solving higher order polynomial equation. So um, what you will need to do, you will have to bring all the terms to the left side to have a zero on the right side, and then you should factor out the variable uh, to the lowest exponent. In our case, we factor x, just x, because the lowest exponent of x is 1. And then we end up with x times quadratic equation. So then here you still can use that zero product property, which means x equals zero or 
whatever you have in the parentheses will is equal to zero. And here is just the quadratic equation, which we have many methods to solve quadratic equation. This one I solve it by factoring using AC methods. Next problem. Example two. Find all the solutions So find all solutions of equation two x third to the third power minus x square plus eight x minus four equals zero. Okay. So this problem it's also the example of higher order polynomial equation. But here um, we can solve it like we solved the previous example uh, because here, there's no way that we can factor variable. We have 2x to the third power, x squared, 8x, but we have that constant, negative 4. So there's no way that we can factor variable. So we have to solve it um, using different method. And in this case, we're going to solve it by grouping. So solve by grouping. So when you can't factor the variable, then you will try to solve equation by grouping. Also, by grouping means usually when you see four terms or six terms, even amount of terms in the equation, that means, okay, maybe I can try grouping because it's, it's easy to put um, the expression in groups. So step number one here will be group the terms in pairs. So first, group the terms in pairs. So usually you're just putting the first two terms together and the last two terms together. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite that. You know what? Let me just create those groups below. So we're going to put the first two terms together. So it's 2x to the third power minus x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals 0. So we have two groups. Next, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to factor the greatest common factor from each pair. So second factor, the GCF, which is greatest common factor from each pair. So from the first parenthesis, I will just show it work on a side. We have 2x to the third power minus x squared. Here, the greatest common factor, it's equal to x squared. So variable to the lowest exponent. So I'm going to factor, we're just moving here, x squared. So then we have 2x to the third power divided by x squared that will give you 2x because 2x times x squared will give me 2x to the third power minus 1. Okay. From the second group, the second group we have 8x minus 4. So here the greatest common factor. We can factor a variable, however, we can uh, factor coefficient. So the greatest common factor will be 4. So we're going to factor 4 out. So then if, if from 8x you factor 4, we end up with 2x minus 1 equals 0. Okay. And you will know that you're solving this problem correctly when after factoring the GCF, 
you end up with two groups which have the same expression inside of the parentheses. So now what we're going to do in step three, you're going to factor the repeating group, which is 2x minus 1. Okay, so we're going to factor the repeating group, which is 2x minus 1. So that will give us, from this expression, I factor 2x minus 1, so that will just give me x squared. Okay. And from this expression, I factor already 2x minus 1, so the only thing which I have left, it's 4. And we're going to make that equal 0. So after factoring uh, the, the repeating group, technically repeating parenthesis, the repeating group. So now we can solve it. Solve using zero product property. So the first group, we're going to make it equal zero. And the second group, x squared plus 4, we're going to make it equal 0. So that will give us x equal 1 half. Here, x squared plus 4. Uh, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And we're getting x squared equal negative 4. Now, I just quickly want to read it that in this problem, they ask you to find all solutions. So not just real solutions, all solutions. That means also we can have those um, imaginary solution, which means a complex number system. So now to solve this one, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And that will give us x square equal positive, negative, square root of 4i. So that means x squared, um, I'm sorry, not x squared, just x here. x equal positive, negative, square root of 4, it's 2, 2i. So we have two solutions here. So together, we're going to put all the answers together. So the solution set is and we're going to list all of them. Negative 2i, 1 half, and 2i. Okay. So that's the solution set. Again, uh, we also find the solutions in complex number system because they ask for all solutions. So that was the example how to solve higher degree polynomial equation using grouping method. Okay, next example, example three. So solve each of the following. And the first one, we're going to solve 2x to the 4 power minus 11x squared plus 12 equals 0. And example 3, uh, here we're solving equations that are quadratic in form. So this is equations. quadratic in form. So we have higher degree equation also because here the degree of polynomial will be 4 because the x, which is our variable, the higher power which x has, it's 4. Um, 
Here we, we can solve by grouping because we only have three terms. We can solve by factoring because we have that 12 and 12 does not have X. So we're going to solve this equation by converting given equation into quadratic equation. Okay. So we're going to introduce one extra variable. We're going to do the substitution. So let u equal x squared. So when you're using, you have equation quadratic in form, usually I would say in 90%, 95%, you're going to substitute the variable which you have in the middle, which is x squared. So let's replace that x squared with you. So let's u being equal x squared. Okay, so then, then um, x to the power of 4, which we have right here, it's going to be equal u squared. Okay, since if u is equal x squared, so u to a second power is just x to the 4 power. So we're going to do those substitutions. And this original equation will become quadratic equation using u as a variable. So we have two, we're going to replace x to the power of four with u square. So two u square minus 11, we're going to replace x square with u plus 12 equals zero. So this is quadratic. quadratic equation and you just need to solve this equation for you. Solve for you. Okay. Um, up, it's up to you how you want to solve it, factoring or maybe quadratic formula. Uh, here I want to use quadratic formula just to review. So we're going to use the quadratic formula just to show you that you, it's, you have options to solve this quadratic equation. So u is equal negative b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac and divide everything by 2 times a. So u is equal negative b. So in our case b it's 11 plus minus square root b square so b, it's negative 11 to a second power minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times 2 times 12 and everything divide by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. So let's simplify. Two negatives gives you positive 11 plus minus and under square root you have 11 square which is 121 uh, minus 8 times 12. So we have 25 under square root divided by 4. So this is just 11 plus minus 5 divided by 4. So we're going to create those two solutions. U1, it's equal 11 plus 5 divided by 4. So first we adding. The second solution will be 11 minus 5 divided by 4. So u1, 11 plus 5, 16 divided by 4, we're getting 4. Uh, u2, it's equal 11 minus 5, which is 6 divided by 4, that is 3 over 2. 6 over 4, reduce that fraction by 2. So u2, it's equal 3 over 2. Okay, so this is not the end, okay? We find the solution of the quadratic equation in terms of u, but now we need to substitute back. Don't forget that our variable, it's x. So now when you find u, we're going back and we have to substitute back because we need to figure out what is x equal. So next, substitute 
back. Don't forget that u is just x squared. Okay, we need to solve this equation for x. So when I got u1, it's equal 4. That just tells you that x squared is equal 4. And then the second equation, when we got that u is equal 3 over 2, that just tells you that x squared is equal 3 over 2. So here, those two equations, now you need to solve for x. Okay. So the first equation to solve for x, we just need to take the square root of both sides. And that will give us that x is equal positive or negative 2. And um, here, to solve the second equation, I'm also going to take the square root of both sides. So that will give you x equal positive negative square root of 3 over 2. So this is the same as positive negative square root of 3 divided by square root of 2. And we need to rationalize the denominator because when we have radicals, the idea is to not keep radical in denominator. So to get rid of, of square root of 2, multiply top and bottom of the fraction by square root of 2. So that will give us positive negative square root of 6 divided by square root of 2 times square root of 2 which is square root of 4. And that just 2. So the solution is positive, negative square root of 6 over 2. So let's put all of that together. The solution set is, and you're going to list all the solutions, OK? Um, we got positive, uh, let's just put them separate. You have to check on my MATLAB how they accept the solution. So we got negative 2, positive 2, negative square root of 6 divided by 2, and positive square root of 6 divided by 2. So four solutions. And hope you guys see that the, the pattern, the original equation, we saw x to the power of 4, and we got 4 solution. In previous equation, we saw, we saw a polynomial equation where x had the highest exponent equal 3, and we end up with 3 solutions. Okay, So this is actually a fundamental theory of um, algebra. The degree of polynomial tells you how many solutions uh, we may have. So um, I have also example B. Example B, this is also example of solving um, equation quadratic in form. So we're going to confirm, um, convert, we're going to convert given equation into quadratic equation. Okay. So here we have 1 divide by x minus 2 to a second power plus 2 divide by x minus 2 minus 15 equals 0. So this is also equation quadratic in form. Okay. Um, I just want to rewrite it that way. 1 divide by x minus 2 square plus 2 times 1 over x minus 2, which is the same, minus 15 equals 0. So this is equation quadratic in form. We're going to solve by substitution. So we're going to substitute. We're going to make, and like I mentioned you, the middle expression which is 1 divided by x minus 2, we're going to make that equal u. So here, 
we have one divided by x minus two to a second power. That will be just u square. So we have u square plus two u minus 15 equals zero. And this is nice quadratic equation. So solve this quadratic equation. for you. Um, it's up to you how you want to solve it. I'm going to use AC method. I'm going to solve it by factoring. So uh, A is equal 1. That's easy factoring when A is equal 1. B is equal 2. C is equal negative 15. So I'm looking for two integers, which by multiplication gives me A times C which will be 1 times negative 15, and that's negative 15. And the same two integers by addition has to give me coefficient b, which is 2. OK, so now we have to check what's going to work. Uh, 5 and negative 3 will work. And here we have a nice case. We'll put it nice case because coefficient a is equal 1, so we're just creating two groups. We have u plus 5 times u minus 3 equals 0. And now just solve two equations. So here we're using that zero product property. That means that u plus 5 equals 0 or u minus 3 is equal to 0. So u is equal to negative 5, u is equal to 3. So when you got that u, okay, we're going back, because don't forget that we're solving this equation for x, and let's just remember that u is just 1 divided by x minus 2. So now substitute back. So u is 1 divided by x minus 2 equal negative 5. And here we have 1 divided by x minus 2 is equal 3. Okay. And to solve this one, both of them, you need to solve for x. Just multiply both sides by the expression which you see in the denominator, which is x minus 2. So we have x minus 2 times 1 divided by x minus 2 equal negative 5 times x minus 2. And the second equation, the same thing. Um, x minus 2 times 1 divided by x minus 2 equal 3 times x minus 2. So x minus 2 here cancels, so we end up with 1 equal distribute negative 5x plus 10. Just solve for x. Uh, I will subtract 10 from both sides. We have negative 9 equal negative 5x and just divide each by negative 5. So we have x equal 9 over 5 and that will be the first solution. Okay. Uh, the second solution that x minus 2, x minus 2 cancel. So we end up with 1 equal 3x minus 6. We're solving for x. Just add 6 to both sides. We're getting 7 equal 3x. And just divide both sides by 3. And that gives us x equals 7 over 3. So two solutions. Okay. So the solution set. Is 
is 9 fifth comma 7 third. Okay. So that was also an example of solving quadratic equation, um, solving equations quadratic in, ter in term, uh, in form, which means you're going to use the substitution, create nice, easy quadratic equation um, using variable u, solve the quadratic equation for u, and then substitute back. And then I have two more examples. So that was example three, this is example four. So solve each of the following. And here I'm going to give you the, the so equations involving radicals. So here this example will be equations involving radicals. So I have two problems like that. Let's do the first one. A. We have... No, I just have one problem like that. Okay. Um, so we have square root of x minus 1 minus 2 it's equal x minus 9. So this is equation involving radical. We see that square root of x minus 1. So what you want to do, step 1, you want to isolate the radical on the left side. of the equation. So you only want to have on the left side the radical. We're going to move everything else to the right side. So in our case, we're going to add 2 to both sides. So now we isolate the radical. We have square root of x minus 1 equal x and negative 9 plus 2 will give us negative 7. Okay, so that's nice. Next, of course, we don't want to have a radical, okay? So second step will be bring both sides of the equation to the second power. So technically square both sides of the equation, okay? Um, so we have square root of x minus 1 equal x minus 7. So I'm putting that expression in the parentheses, and now we're going to square both sides of the equation. So here on the left side, it's easy because uh, square root and the second power undo each other. So we only end up with x minus 1 with the expression, which is under radical. Now, um, on the right side, you have x minus 7 to a second power. So technically, FOIL, this is just x minus 7 times x minus 7. And we're going to FOIL. So we have x minus 1, it's equal f, multiply first one, so x squared, o stands for multiply outside, so x times negative 7 is negative 7x, i stands multiply inside, negative 7x, l stands multiply last. So negative 7 times negative 7 will give us 49. You can FOIL or use the formula a minus b square, which is square of difference, which is equal to a square minus 2ab 
plus b square. It's up to you. Okay, uh, so we have x minus 1 equal x square minus 14x plus 49. Okay, and now, like you see, this is quadratic equation. So, you're going to move all terms to one side and solve the quadratic equation. Okay, so here um, we're going to move x to the right side, so let's subtract x from both sides. And also we'll move that negative 1 to the right side, so the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1, so I'm going to add 1. So that will give us 0 equal x squared, negative 14x minus x will give us negative 15x plus 15. Okay. Nice equation, quadratic, it's up to you how you want to solve it. Um, I'm going to solve it by factoring since a is equal 1, so it's easy to factor. So I'm going to solve by factoring. Using AC method. So I'm looking for two integers, which by multiplication gives me a times c, which is 50. And the same two integers by addition has to give me coefficient b, which is negative 15. And uh, negative 10, negative 5 will work. So now we're creating two factors x minus 10 times x minus 5 equals 0 and we're solving two equations x minus 10 equals 0 x minus 5 equals 0 and that gives you x equal 10 x equal 5 so two solutions so that was the example of how to solve the equations with radicals when you have a radical you want to isolate that radical and then bring both sides of the equation to a second power. Stuff should nicely simplify and you should end up with the quadratic equation, which we already know how to solve it. So uh, that's all the method. I have um, one more example. I forgot to solve one more example, just a little different of solving um, equations quadratic in form. So I want to do one extra, okay? Just to technically just provide you something different. So one more example of solve the equ equation quadratic in form. Okay, so one extra example. So, uh, so of course, we'll use the substitution, but this is different. Uh, here we have x to the power of 2 over 3 minus 9x to the power of 1 third plus 8 equals 0. So it may not look like, but this is equation quadratic in form, and we're going to substitute x to the power of 1 third. So I mentioned 95%, the term in the middle, that's the one which we're going to substitute. But before we do it, okay, I want to just quickly give you the hint that x to the power of 2 thirds is the same as x to the power of 1 third and bring to the second power. Because here I'm using the power of power property with exponents. So technically you multiply two powers and two times one third will give you that two thirds. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as x to the power one third, and then everything to a second power, minus nine x to the power one third plus eight equals zero. 
And now this is equation quadratic in form. We're going to substitute. We're going to make so let's substitute and we're going to introduce u. So let u be equal x to the power of one third. So that will give us u square minus nine u plus eight equals zero. And solve this quadratic equation. For u. And I'm going to solve it, use AC method, factoring. So easy to factor here because A is equal 1. So you will end up with U minus 8 times U minus 1 after using AC method. And now we're solving two equations, U minus A equals 0, U minus 1 equals 0. That will give you and we end up here with u equal 8, u equal 1, and then substitute back. u is just x to the power of 1 third. So that means that x to the power of 1 third is equal 8, and here x to the power of one third equal one. So to solve for x, just bring both sides to the third power. So that will cancel and this is just x equal a to the third power, uh, which is 512. And that will cancel here and x is equal one, okay? So that was one extra example of solving quadratic equations. Uh, solving equation is quadratic in form. Thank you so much for watching. Hope that will help.